Pocock now, who is in magnificent form in the Test Series, on strike. Nobody. Yeah. The back of the top, back enjoying his cricket. Nice and relaxed. Man of the series in the Test Series. Chris Gale at first slip. Getting hold of that one. Over the top of man at a short fine leg. The outfield's a little bit on the slow side again because of a little bit of rain around, but that's good fielding. McCoy it is, just a couple. Just using the angle here, in Quinton de Kock. Wrong the wicket, Kevin Sinclair, angle it down the leg side. Just tried to get under that one. Didn't get the contact that he was looking for, but two runs nonetheless. No flight at all to de Kock. He's in the leg side to retain the strike. First over gone, four for none. Chris Gale, what a powerhouse man he's been. Sensational T20 cricketer over the years. Always a delight to see him in the lineup for the West Indies. Quick look at uh, the teams again as Jason Holder prepares to start the second over. So Rabad and Okia and also Ngidi is playing. Shams is playing as a spinner. Linda's also playing. But they do only have five bowlers, the South Africans, which has been a little bit of an issue from time to time. Between Gale, Russell, Bravo and Pollard, they have now played 1,803 T20 games. Between those four for the West Indies. Also, actually, amongst those four, it's the first time they've played together for the West Indies since 2015. But that is a lot of T20 games, Samuel. Powerful quartet for the West Indies, like you mentioned, vastly experienced. The West Indies team will be looking at those players to make an impact in the defense of that World T20 title later on in the year. And Jason Holder usually does really well with the new ball. 50% of his wickets in T20 cricket coming in the power play. De Cox chasing that wide. Needed an extended handle there to reach that one, De Cox. So he has that responsibility in this team, Jason Holder, to get those early wickets. Bowls are a good length on that occasion, just straying wide. But he has a slip in place and generally looks to go across the left-hander. Oh, he's having a bit of a rough trot at the start, is uh, the big fella, big Jason Holder. You mentioned Mike is the only player in this West Indies team to have featured in that test match. So the only player who plays all formats for the West Indies team. So there isn't that psychological baggage as it was from that 2-0 test match defeat. Again, a bit wide. Now, you might have picked up the call in the stump mics of two. Touch and turn, back for the second. And generally, after such a convincing victory in a test match series, you have that momentum, that psychological edge going into the other formats. Not so much so against this West Indies T20 team. Like I mentioned, just Jason Holder from that test match series so these players none of them will have that psychological disadvantage as it will having lost 2 nil so it's a fresh team fresh format and a favored format for these guys yeah it is their favorite one let's not forget that this is where they uh, play their best cricket it's uh, quite bizarre they're at the bottom of the t20 list out of all the countries they won't like that very much gone over the top He's in really good form at the moment to cock again. It's just plugged a little bit, so there's going to be some chasing on. Bravo it is this time. Hey, 
a couple more to the cock. And that's the way he plays in the power play, free flowing. And given the license, look at that. Returns from the test match series. Narrowly missing out on a second test match century in the second test. But he's not going to hold back. He's going to give it everything. I think we've already seen the tracks on the slow side. A couple of balls from Holder. We can see that already. Quite coming on to the bat, but such is the form of the cock. He's just stroked that one down the ground for four. That is a remarkable shot. He moved across to the offside just to get access to the ball because he knew that Jason Holder is looking to bowl a little bit wide. And that early movement allowed him to get closer to the line of the ball. And just lent nice and sweetly. Good timing from Quinton Lecoq, even though the surface might just be a little bit slow. So this is a tester first up for Jason Holder. Already gone for nine, two balls remaining. South Africans, by the way, take pride in the fact that they're pretty good in the power play, the batting power play. Of the last uh, 18 months or so, they've been going at about 26% of their runs scored in boundaries. The average is around about the 20% mark. So the batting power play for South Africa and T20 internationals has been impressive. And they want to continue in that mode again in this series. That equates also, by the way, to a, a run rate in the power play on average of around about nine, just above the nine runs and over. And this guy is a free-flowing batter. So a testing over for Holder. 11 from it, 15 for none. Good news for fans, we do have some of them in the stadium, fully vaccinated, of course, and given the opportunity to look at some of their favorite players on show at the Grenada National Stadium. Kevin Sinclair continues a good, solid first over from him, from the river end. It's got to be another good one. Over the top, opening the blade. Free-flowing, good work from Hendricks. Really good shot, that. Deliberately tried to hit that one in there over the top with the mid-off in position and got enough connection on it to get to the boundary. Just over pitching and a little bit wide from Kevin Sinclair in the slot. And not where he'd be wanting to bowl in this phase of the innings, but a really good shot from Risa Hendricks. I need you to do uh, just uh, take over a bit here, Samuel. He used to do this job, opening the bowling, of course, in T20 internationals and for many franchises. Number one bowler in T20s in the world for a couple of years. What's the mindset now of Hendricks? First ball boundary. Bowler obviously under some pressure, so you want to continue that. You want to capitalize, especially in these early power playovers. And against a West Indies team that is really star-studded, you want to get an overpass score. In this venue, generally uh, high scoring. Yeah, correction, I meant Sinclair, my error. That's what you need too, that helps. Excellent, bravo, excellent, bravo. Many people have spoken about the average age of this West Indies team and how that will impact their feeling. Dwayne Bravo is still showing that he is quite capable at the international level, diving full stretch to his left. And that would be one of the challenges for this West Indies team in the field as they head towards that T20 World Cup later on in the year. Really good shot. That is beautifully hit straight down the ground and that has gone for a big six. Terrific stuff from Riza Hendricks. You asked about the mindset. Well, there it is. Taking on the fielder in the deep after the four in the first delivery. 
The fielder was positioned in the long off region. And he still took him on. And to really good effect, Reza Hendricks. Very confident. And seals away. Magnificent start here for the South Africans. 11 off the previous over. Four balls into this one. Has also travelled. Twelve off it. Let's add four more. Really good work. Terrific fast feet. Making the adjustment in length, Kevin Sinclair, after being drilled over his head in the previous delivery, but too short on this occasion. And against Reza Hendricks, excellent placement, excellent timing, another boundary. So tremendous pressure being placed on the young off spinner. Can he finish off well? Gonna have to bowl that one again. So South Africa going at uh, 11.3 at the moment to the over. There's a dot ball. I need more of those. 32 for none. T20 cricket is a great deal of fun. These guys are going to express themselves today. There's no doubt South Africa have got the West Indies under pressure at the moment. It's all about seeing how they bounce back now. Change in bowling from the Darbo Road end. Previous over. A wonderful batting from Ariza Hendricks, putting pressure immediately on the youngster Kevin Sinclair, four, followed by a six and another four in that over. Very expensive. Fabian Allen replaces Jason Holder, given an opportunity with the new ball. This West Indies team searching for that right or winning combination. And certainly with the ball, their batting more or less has been settled. Of course, there's Shemron Hetmeyer, who many people feel should be in this West Indies team. Of course, he will get an opportunity, I'm sure. Oh, that's not too far away. I don't think Quinton knew where that was, actually. Hit him on the uh, the pad as it was heading towards the stump. But with 15 T20 internationals before that World Cup, along with the CPL, lots of opportunities for players. This is just the first game. I'm sure there will be some rotation as the West Indies selectors, team management, and try to zero in on that best combination. South Africa have around about the same, 15. But Temba Vavuma, in an interview with me the other day, said that uh, he come will on, want to know yes, at the end of this T20 series. One. Two was One the call to Cockers on the back oh, foot. I think it's going to stop him coming back for second. And he might have done something. No, he's OK. Excellent. Excellent. Temba Vavuma said that at the end of this series, he's going to want to have a fair idea of what his squad is going forward. So it's time to channel things a bit. So the guys can work together and get used to playing together and used to winning together. Yeah, you don't want to wait too late. You don't want to be into the, the 13, 14, T20 international and still searching for that combination. You want to get that sorted quite quickly. Get in there, get in give players get their roles and responsibilities and have that maybe squad of 13 sorted in your mind as a captain as a management unit Karen Pollard will be thinking about that and that title defense yeah. him. found the gap bit of a gap there and it's gone straight through and the celebrations begin excellent start for Fabian Allen into his first over and picking up the dangerous Reza Hendricks might have just Kept a fraction low, advanced down the pitch, and played a defensive shot. The ball was still able to sneak through. Might just have slid on. 
through Baton Pad. So playing down the wrong line, Ariza Hendricks. And look at the elation, the celebration from the Jamaican. He certainly enjoyed that one. First wicket falls for South Africa. Hendricks goes for a well played 17. Teddy 3 for 1. South African captain, Temba Bovuma. At the crease now, batting at number three, the spot that he wants to uh, get used to, wants to nail down. And of course, is uh, very happy he's out there, had some injury issues. Hip kept him out of the uh, the first test match, a dislocated finger, badly dislocated finger, kept him out of the second. And now look at the dismissal, there was no turn. Just went on straight. Cleared to hit a uh, shiny part of the ball, I guess, and didn't deviate. Nice pressure here, Dre. So give him nothing a shout out to Polly. Love the expressive celebrations from the boys in the Caribbean. <laughs> Was that outside the line of the off stump? By Augusta says uh, yes it was. So uh, one of the things that Bob Vorma looks to do. Yeah, not a powerful player. And so he looked to deflect the ball, manipulate the strike as best as possible. Get in there. Well, that's an outstanding over. That really is. Picked up a wicket, one run only, 33 for one. Three very powerful players, Klaas and Miller, Linda, to come after Van der Dussen. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that batting lineup. Ultra Edge shows there was a little bit of glove involved in that uh, appeal. West Indies needed an over like that from Fabian Allen just to pull things back after that expressive, explosive start from the South Africans. Change of ends for Jason Holder, operating from the river end now. Replaces Kevin Sinclair. Expensive in his second over. Only two people allowed outside the circle, of course, in the uh, power play, which makes it challenging for the captain. There's a few guys out there for uh, the West Indies who have been captains at some stage. Big swing and a miss from De Kock this time. <laughs> He's expressive, De Kock. And the loss of Hendricks hasn't affected the way he's going to play in Quinton Decock. First ball of the over. Expansive shot. So still trying to make use of this power play. They just perhaps feel that they need to get off to a really good power play score in order to compete with this powerful West Indies batting lineup. Sure, that's exactly right. Scoop that away, nice and fine. One bounce and that's gone for four. That's a very clever shot. Really innovative and inventive from Quinton de Kock. He kept his eyes on the ball all the way. And that was the key in this shot. Of course, you have to be very courageous as well. And just getting the length that he wanted. Beating the fielder in the deep, who was a little bit square. Pull toss straight to the man at Dick Hepster cover. You might have uh, heard the exasperation from the cock. Well, 
they've really struggled, uh, the West Indies. They haven't got their lines or their lengths right yet. Just the one over has curbed things. Reaching that. There is a sweeper. And I think he might have been short had the arms been longer. And Perrant. Correction, Fletcher. Excellent throw from Fletcher. I just felt that Nicholas Bruan took a little bit long getting to the stumps. Bruan is not in the picture just yet. A better throw might have been detrimental for Quinton de Kock. Yeah, Bruan is off balance. Oh, he's hammered that. He's hit that beautifully. That's gone all the way for six. That is an outstanding shot. The Kock is putting on a show. Absolutely smashes this one. Quinton Lecoq predicted the line has been bowling outside the off stump every delivery. Jason Holder, so he just made an initial movement across to the offside and got the length as well. And a massive blow from Quinton Lecoq. Races on to 26, two fours and a solitary six so far. You would think that Hold is a bit of a banker for the West Indies side. He's going at 12 and a half now. One ball away from completing two overs, so this is uh, an upset of the plans, I'm sure. So close to ten, ten and over, where they want to be, South Africa, at this stage. Down the ground, just the single, so importantly, the clock's going to retain the strike. 46 for one off five. Greetings, everyone, wherever you may be. We have a game on our hands, 46 for one after five. South Africa batting first, being sent in by the West Indies. This was a previous delivery to the dismissal. Let's pull the length back, David Allen. Maybe he spotted that initial movement early and responded to it. So important in T20 cricket to keep your eyes on the batsman when you're bowling. Make that last minute adjustment. Hello, Stacey Ann King. Hello, Darren. It will be interesting to see how Tamba Bavuma applies his innings here. Dot delivery, pressure building. Hasn't played a lot of the T20 internationals, Demba Bavuma, now carrying dual roles as a batsman, as a captain. Gets this one through. And it will feel good for Bavuma. His uh, first boundary in his innings. Not even a short delivery, but nicely pulled away here. Gets himself into position quite early, Bavuma. Been featuring the test matches uh, because of injury, lacking a bit of game time. So far, he looks uh, quite fluent at the crease. Keep going, keep going, man, keep going, man. Come on, boys, come on, boys. Just one delivery on, left. Uh, to complete the power play phase of the innings. Keep watching him, Fabi. Just a single to end the over. Seven runs coming from it. And it's 53 for one.
Signal meaning the start of the middle phase of the innings uh, for the first time. Andrew Russell with the ball. Mentioned before the start of the game the impact that he has had when he plays for the West Indies. They win 61% of the times as against uh, when he doesn't play. And it's interesting because he brings an all-wrong game. He brings an all-wrong performance, bowling, batting, and fielding for West Indies. But we'll see how he shapes up against Quinton Dicker in form, 29 of 20. Fitness is a major part of uh, his success in T20 internationals. Doesn't quite look like he had his run up there. He's bowling after this uh, phase in the power play. South Africa were very good. Uh, five fours, uh, two sixes in the innings. picks up sweetly and it goes all the way high and over the boundary line picked up nicely by Quinton Nico just stand and deliver Top scorer for the innings so far. Quinton de Kock, 35 from 22. He was a difference in the batting between both teams. Uh, got that magnificent 141 unbeaten in the first test. And then again in the second test, he produced runs for South Africa. That's in the Betway Test Series. Now again leading from the front. Change in the field. Third man comes into the 30-yard circle. And there is a long off now. <laughs> Two is a call. Pollard will know that uh, Andrew Russell has gotten Quinton de Kock out four times in T20s. Very often matchups play an important part in captains and their decision making. <laughs> Got him again. As we said, the matchup has worked. Pollard and the West Indies, along with Andre Russell, strike. Driven and gone. Safe hands of Jason Holder. Quinton Dicock goes for 37. South Africa, 61 for two. Let's go, 
What a fine player he is, Rassi van der Dusen. LT average of 42, a strike rate just a touch under 140. He's been made a major part of South Africa's batting in the middle phase of the innings. I'll tell you something significant about South Africa. Let's enjoy this uh, wicket by the West Indies. Uh, didn't get the elevation, Quinton de Kock. He was attempting to go over the top. Maybe the pace of the delivery got onto him a little bit quicker than expected. Pulled away nicely to get off the mark, Van der Dusen. Excessive bounce, surprising Bafuma. A wicket and nine runs uh, for Andre Russell. It's 62 for two. Well, we're here in beautiful Grenada, known as the Spice Isle. First uh, T20 international of a five match series. And this is beautiful Grenada. What a Caribbean island. Grenada, part of the Grenadines. I don't know, about 348 square kilometers, a population of approximately 113 people, known for its nutmeg, its spice. Very friendly people, beautiful beaches all around the island. Backlight, the Western is just clawing its way back into this game after a very good power play for South Africa. <laughs> loud appeal, loud appeal. And move the umpire. There is uh, the option of uh, DRS for Karen Pollard. Will they go for the review? Person might be about the bat. He's gone for it. Patrick, re review for LBW, TV umpire to director. We have a player's review for LBW. The on field decision is not out. It's a fair delivery. Can I have front on spin division, please? Keep rolling. Ball is very close to the bat and gloves. You can roll that for me. Okay. Can I get ultra edge to see if any gloves or bat involved? Wait on Ultra Edge, guys. Still waiting. Ultra Edge available coming up. Ultra Edge coming up, guys. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Flat line, keep rolling. There's no contact on bat on gloves. Above the gloves, got some contact. Yes, on the elbow, above the elbow, there's contact. Um, can I have. Ball, ball tracking man is available. Ball tracking coming up. Pitching in line, in pack in line, wickets missing. Can we go back to the on field umpire? Patrick, can you stay with your not out decision? You're on screen now. We felt that there might have been a little bit of bat on that one. Whilst we looked at that review, a bit of rain has kept the ground staff busy. Players are making their way off the field. So we will have a delay. Seven minutes loss, no loss of overs. So full complement of 20 will be available to South Africa. Play. Yes, he's a single now what I've seen in T20 cricket uh, 
of late is uh, an evolution to the way things have been done from the onset of this format of the game. Players now, they carry multiple roles, whether they're batting or bowling. We've also seen spinners bowl a bit more in the debt overs. We might just see that with uh, Tabrez Shamsi. The number one T20 international bowler in the world. who is playing for this uh, South African outfit. And you've seen, Darren, that most teams, both teams have used, gone with the option of using more of their all-rounders. So Shamsi is going to play an important role, as Fabian Allen is doing for his team. Difference with Shamsi, he bowls uh, primarily outside the power playovers. And he's also using the debt overs. He's been a genuine wicket taker for South Africa in T20 internationals. Nice skill being shown uh, by Sivan de Dusanant and uh, Babuma. Paddle sweep, reverse sweep, just manipulating the field. It's good when there's an you have an archive of, of shots that you can just pull out and, and use according to who's body. Bowling. Keeper. Run a ball this over. 68 for two. Klassen, Miller, Linda, and they all have power. South Africa wouldn't be worried about uh, scoring in the debt overs. Single still stolen. Now, I mentioned I had an important stat to share with you about uh, South Africa and another team. Of the 12 full member countries since 2019, only two teams have scored over an average run rate of eight in the power play and also have an increased average scoring rate from power play to middle overs. One team is South Africa, the next New Zealand. What that says is uh, the acceleration continues. There is belief and depth in South Africa's batting. Some of the best teams in T20 cricket, that's what they do. That trend of accelerating scoring throughout the innings happens. Little risk and great reward. A boundary for Van der Dusen. A nicely educated edge by Van der Dusen. Picking up four runs, four more runs. It's also a fearless attitude that uh, has uh, provided the success for South Africa in the middle overs. So that in the test series uh, from Rassi van der Dusen in the second test match when he scored a half century, held the innings together, wasn't afraid to play his shots. And I'm sure we'll see the same here from him. It's been Mr. Dependable for South Africa with the bat. There it is, that's 75. Is what made a whole lot of difference in that second test match with South Africa one. <laughs> Drizzle coming down might have another delay, hoping that it doesn't persist. Strong men are standing by. Yep, they wouldn't have to stand by for too long. Covers are coming on. The 
They've had to work really hard prior to the start of this T20 International. And now during this encounter. Not ideal for both teams. I feel South Africa will probably have a little more of a disadvantage because uh, this stop-start situation doesn't help in a batsman's rhythm. Zumption is here. And Bavuma starts uh, on a very good note, a boundary. Just dropping short here, Andrew Russell. And pulled away nicely by Temba Bavuma. Two is the call. Running has been excellent by South Africa in this inning so far. Expensive over, conceded by the West Indies, uh, 80 for two. Dr. The Honorable Keith Claudius Isaac Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, right of screen. Welcome to you, sir. Longest serving Prime Minister in Grenadian history. Enjoying the action, being a wonderful host sir, for this leg of the tour. Five T20 internationals to be played right here at the National Stadium in Grenada. And a newcomer with the ball, Obed McCoy. Stacey Ann, what can we expect from Obed? A left arm seamer, it's interesting to see. So Paul, like yourself, uh, in recent times, uh, he's been very good with his variations. He's got a multitude of slow deliveries. Uh, not about Fox batsmen in this format of the game. Still a very young man, Robert McCoy. Hails from St. Vincent. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Can't forget the Grenadine Islands. things I must say about uh, the West Indies in its uh, quest to defend its uh, ICC T20 title. The bowling department requires much more focus than the batting. Obed McCoy is uh, probably a viable option for Karen Pollard and the West Indies uh, with his left arm seam. I also would like to see O'Shane Thomas back into this West Indies T20 international team. He's done very well with the ball. The only bowler in this uh, West Indies squad to have achieved five wickets in a T20 international. So at some point in time, it would be great to see O'Shane Thomas with the ball for the West Indies. Innovation being shown. He's not afraid uh, to play that ram shot and he does it quite well. Getting in line here, Tem Temba Bavuma. And nicely played. Innovation once again. This is only the sixth uh, T20 international match uh, for Obed McCoy. 
And what we've seen uh, so far is 40% uh, of his deliveries are slower deliveries. Deliveries less than 120 kilometers per hour. So as a batsman, you've got to set yourself uh, for those slower deliveries. So far, we've already seen a couple. And it's interesting because 12 of his 25 T20 wickets would have come from bowling these variations. And this was one of his slow balls. The back of uh, the arm. Not a bad start, just six runs from the over, 86 for two. Fabian Allen really stands out from a bowling point of view. One for 13 in his three overs and some excellent economy rates and not a bad start for McCoy as well in his first over. Now, Dwayne Bravo, a master of bowling at the back end of an innings. Such an experienced player. Interested to see how South Africa approaches this uh, second half of the innings. What a career he has had. He is absolutely fabulous. The longevity of him is, is just something special. Been playing well over 19 years of cricket. It just keeps going. How much longer for him is the question. That economy rate over that period of time is very special. Over 500 wickets. What is also phenomenal about that, Natalie, is the times and the innings in which he usually bowls. Dwayne Bravo bowls are difficult overs for every team that he's played for. That overs in particular, that slower ball has been such a wicket-taking delivery for him over the span of his career. Very deceptive, even though players would have seen it for such a long time, it's still very effective. A little careful there, Temba Bavuma. Does play that shot sometimes, gets himself into a little bit of trouble. He's very quick between the wickets, though. Almost, almost looks like he was setting himself up for that slower ball from Dwayne Bravo. Ball that one a little bit quicker. Might just have caught him at the crease. But very skillful, very guileful, very experienced. Dwayne Bravo, the only bowler in T20 cricket. They get over 500 mm -hmm. T20 wickets. That's his favourite area. He loves to play to the leg side, Rusty Van Adissen. I'm not sure that South need to build a little bit of momentum. These two know each other very well. They play together home franchise. They uh, would have played in this format a lot as well together from a domestic point of view. Should have a good record together as well. Know each other well. Just past the halfway stage in this innings for South Africa into the 11th over, 90 for two. Well, bold again. We're talking about that slow ball. Gotcha. Where do you see them ending up, Natalie? What do you think is a good score against? this star-studded batting lineup. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Because we've seen through history, there's not a lot of games that have been played yet, but it's been a good chasing ground. Not surprised that the West Indies chose to field first. 
at this current rate, just feel that that's not going to be enough, is it? Uh, just uh, close to 170. Yeah, he should put that away, and he has. It's a good way to end that over after a few good balls from Dwayne Bravo. 95 for two. Current run rate gets South Africa to around 170. You know, imagine they'd want a bit more than that. One of the ways to get uh, the run rate going, of course, is to put the bad balls away. That needed to be put away. That was the last ball of the last over. Oh, this has gone straight up. Doesn't have the distance and an easy catch on the boundary. It took a little while to get to Evan Lewis, but he's managed to take it. And it's a big wicket. That man again, Fabian Allen, picks up another wicket, another important wicket, that of the captain, Temba Bavuma. Just when this partnership was really going, the West Indies team needed this. Just a slightly slower delivery from Fabian Allen. Not really a powerful strike of the ball. Temba Bavuma didn't have the distance. Uh, quite a simple catch in the end for Evan Lewis. He goes for 22. The Proti is 95 for three. Henry Klaassen walks in for South Africa. He's got 350s to his name. That strike rate is one of the best in the world. He is a big hitter of the ball. Started his career with a bang as well in this format. Temba Bavuma in the end trying to clear the boundary rope. And in the end, just didn't get the distance that he needed. He knew that they needed to get a move on, though. I feel that the captain wanted just to push the foot on the accelerator. Now it's up to Rusty van Edison and the new batter class and to get things moving. Been really impressed with Fabian Allen. Not only in this inning so far, but against uh, Sri Lanka in the previous series. Was prepared to bowl a little bit slower. And give the ball an opportunity to turn. Has good variations. He changes up his pace quite well, does Fabian Allen. Be quite an impactful player for the West Indies team with both bat and ball, and we know how electric he is in the field. The role for Heinrich Klaas as well in this series. He captained South Africa in the previous one with an injury to Temba Bavuma. He was uh, just trying to find some form, and there's a bit bits and pieces for him. Rusty van Edison, on the other hand, has been in really good form. He missed out on the couple of the T20 internationals against Pakistan at home because of injury. He picked up a quad strain in the ODIs. Get it, fabulous! And he's moved up to number six in the world as Rusty van Edison in the ICC T20 rankings. Does get the feeling, Natalie, that teams, when they come up against this West Indies unit, they're not too sure what that good score is, what that winning score is, and it might just feel tempted to go hard all the way through and in doing so they may lose more wickets than they necessarily would and end up short of a good score i just think that they need to continue to build build a partnership these two in class and van der Dussen, and then you have the likes of david miller to come who can explode in the final few overs but don't aim too high. Don't aim for that 180, 190. If you can get to 170, 160 with this bowling lineup that South Africa has, I think it's going to be a challenging score.
quick call. Ends the over and ends the spell from Fabian Allen. Brilliant bowling, brings up the 100. 100 for three. Innings didn't start too badly from South Africa's point of view, but then a wicket did peg things back a little bit. South Africa now looking for a bit of momentum. How much of a difference will that Temba Bavulmut wicket make that came in the last over? It'll all unfold in the next few overs. Just feel like this is an important phase of the game. He's always going to look to do that. Rossi van Edison's play to the leg side. They've rotated the strike quite well, the South Africans. And very few dot balls so far in this innings, along with the boundaries. And so they're doing exactly what they need to do. And something that really bugs the West Indies when they bat in terms of the number of dot balls. And so these batsmen are prepared to hit the ball in the gaps and run hard and get the odd boundaries. So it's a good template that they have. Only 19 dot balls and we're into the 13th over. Well, Fabian Allen came in as uh, the first change bowler in this lineup, and what a day he's had. This has been a brilliant spell of bowling by him. About three overs on the trot up front. First of all, got the wicket of Reza Hendricks, who was looking so good for his 17. And then from a point of view of how he went about uh, his overs, he kept things tight. And the West Indies team, they are searching for a, a solid spin bowler who you can bank on four, four overs. They have played Kevin Sinclair in this match. There is Caden Walsh Jr. as well, along with Aki Lusin. But Fabian Allen has stood head and shoulders above the others so far in the last T20 International Series and so far in this one, good lengths, good change of pace, good variations. Giving no width, is he? Yeah, really no option to free the arms. Got the wickets of Hendricks and Timba Bavuma. <laughs> Took a long time to get there. You could have changed his mind about three times with that shot. And you know that, that he's going to bowl this delivery. As a batsman, as a team, everyone expects this from Dwayne Bravo. And yet still, he's super effective in T20 cricket with that slower ball. Like you mentioned, Natalie, so many shots going through your mind to play to that delivery. This is brilliant from Bravo. And he started like this in his first over of the spell did go for a boundary at the end so he's going to want to finish well here this has been quite superb uh, very experienced Wayne Braba South Africans will know him relatively well over the years they faced him many times yeah, a lot of uh, exchange of ideas on what to do when facing Braba Simply brilliant. Very difficult to get away. High skill from Bravo. 104 for three. West Indies have certainly got a lot of options when it comes to bowling. There's a lot of variation within the attack as well. 
when Bravo is in the middle of an excellent spell. His last over just going for four runs. Now, Coy's first over was a very good one as well, just going for six. Wonder if from South Africa's point of view, who are they looking to target in the back end of this innings? Ooh, not too often you see the leave. Well, these are the two bowlers who will, you would assume, bowl the death overs for the West Indies. Obed McCoy with two and perhaps Dwayne Bravo with the other two. And a lot of variation, a lot of slower balls. Very skillful Obed McCoy spoke about his interaction with Dwayne Bravo and the mindset in bowling in power play in T20 cricket. There you go, you're talking about the skills, the slower balls. I don't think Henry Thompson And so many different variations of this slower ball, back of the arm, just rolls his fingers across some. Very skillful, not the easiest delivery to bowl. And fast bowlers will tell you that. And to get the, the line and the length as well, very difficult, something that you must practice continuously in order to master it. And Oben McCoy has demonstrated that ability. Well, they had a run to the total, and he'll have to bowl that again. I just feel like this has been the last few overs. It's really setting it up well from the West Indies' point of view in terms of how they bowl these last few overs. Well, South Africa, they need to make the play now. The pressure is on the Proteas to do something. But, uh, run rate is now below eight and over. We we're doing pretty well, but above nine and over. Now, all of a sudden, at this rate, you're looking at 160. You can't see 160 being enough, even with the South African bowling lineup that they have. Well, they'll need early wickets, that's for sure. I just feel that if they can get to that 10 run and over mark 172, 175 perhaps, that will be very challenging on this surface, even with the West Indies batting lineup. So it's going to take an, an effort, a superb effort from here on end. That's brilliant. Absolutely superb. And the crowd that has come in love it as they should. Still showing that he's got what it takes. Dwayne Bravo in the field. Appreciated by his teammates. Appreciated by those spectators who are in. Not appreciated by the South African batsman, Klassen. He wanted a boundary. Perhaps he thought he deserved it. Another good delivery. Using the pitch. Using the pitch quite well. And his variations, Oben McCoy. Every time I see this young man play, I'm impressed with what he does. He learns quite quickly. And in consultation with someone as experienced as Dwayne Bravo, just feel that he has such a bright future. 37 years of age. He looks more, more like he's 27 years of age. Moves around so well, very athletic, always has been. Always been a, a very good fielder. Struggling to find the boundaries of South Africa. Ends the over. 109 for three. Wonderful to have the crowd in here with us. As long as uh, you are fully vaccinated, you can make your way through. Very exciting to have uh, the crowd with us, supporting the West Indies, the T20 international champions. Holder now. Try the slower ball. Not enough bet on it. Oh, unlucky. 
an attempt to dive forward. And in the end, just couldn't quite get there, Sinclair. He's a good fielder. Might have just misjudged this one, Kevin Sinclair. His initial movement was just to hang back, thinking that that ball was coming towards him. He is hitting against the wind, Van der Dusen. Another slower ball from the West Indies bowlers, Jason Holder, into the surface. But that initial movement didn't allow him to get in that catching zone. Good delivery, good follow-up delivery from Jason Holder. The West Indies bowlers in the last three, four overs have pulled things back quite nicely after an expensive start. Yeah, South Africa after 10 overs were 86 for two. They would have been eyeing up that 170, 180 mark. And now they're going to struggle to get there. That's thanks to these last few overs from the West Indies where they've taken wickets, but also brought back the run rate quite a bit. But now South Africa have to finish well. They've got the batting to do it. Miller's still in the bank, though. Brilliant. Wonderful bowling. A little surprised, though, that we didn't see David Miller come in a bit earlier. He's a big factor player for South Africa. He's been playing a bit of cricket as well, been a part of the PSL, flew over here after that. So he has been playing quite a bit and he's been in good form. He's a big player for South Africa in this format. Real slower ball. And again, this time around, straight towards the fielder and take it. Hold it into the attack and gets a big wicket, the big hitter. Change of fielders in that position. Fabian Allen, brilliant in the field. Replaced Kevin Sinclair, who probably misjudged the one a little bit earlier. This time, he makes no mistake with it. Another short delivery, slow ball into the surface. He didn't have enough pace on it to beat that fielder. Such a, an exceptional catcher, Fabian Allen. Success for Jason Holder. Success for the West Indies. Another wicket falls for South Africa. Class and goals for seven, one twelve for four. Lefty, lefty. David Miller walks to the crease. Big player for South Africa, one of the most experienced as well. One of the most kept for South Africa in this format. 82 matches to his name. Strike rate is what it's all about for him. 140. I'm sure he'd love to get a, a few more half centuries to his name. But it is all about where he bats as well. Can he finish well? That 100. Still a world record in terms of the fastest tie with Rohit Sharma. He is somebody who can get on with the game. That's just what South Africa need. Will he be the one to inject some energy into this innings? Henry Klaassen is a big player as well for South Africa. He's got a, a wonderful career strike rate of 151. One of the reasons why he was sent in at this stage is to get on with it. That's some good fielding. Van Allen has had a wonderful day. Batman didn't cross. And that dismissal means David Miller will take strike immediately. So much rests on his shoulder now if South Africa had to get the score upwards of 160, 170 five overs after this one. It doesn't seem to be a pitch where you can come straight away and strike boundaries. It seems to be something in it for those slower balls into the surface. West Indies have identified that. This is 
is excellent by Jason Holder. He just had a, a bit of an expensive start. This has been a very good comeback by Holder. He's such a good player for the West Indies. So will this be enough for South Africa? They really got to go some to get close to that 165, 170 mark. He's trying to get a move on, but the timing's not there at the moment for Rusty van Edison and for South Africa. 15 overs gone, 114 for four. Well, it's quite simple. South Africa got to go here. If they go at 10 and over from here, they get to the 164 mark, which I'm sure is not going to be enough against this uh, powerhouse batting lineup that uh, the West Indies team have. David Miller is key. He's a boundary hitter. Funder Dawson's going at a runner ball, so Miller's got to get on strike. Russell now. Bit of a round arm that time from Russell. He's done to the onside. Just the one. We often talk about impact players, match winners, players with X Factor. Andrew Russell is one. He's back in West Indian colours. He has a very good record in T20 internationals playing for the West Indies. In this format of the game, when he plays, win percentage 61% for the West Indies. That's significant. That's since his debut. Without Russell, they only win 30% of the time. And I, and I guess most of that is because of his batting, I guess. He has, hasn't bowled a great deal over the years, but now he seems to be quite strong with that knee. He's had that problem with the knee. He and his fielding as well. Athleticism. Yeah, let's not forget that. <laughs> or oh, to leading edge, it's going to be safe. And you know, Mike, in this format of the game, if you have a player with the stature of Andre Russell, the number of overs doesn't really allow you as an opposition team to get back into the game. After you experience the heroics of a player like Russell. Yeah, you've got to remember there's a, a T20 game is often about just brilliant little cameos. With a, and it, he's done it so many times in all formats. All forms, I should say, of T20 games, franchise games, T20 internationals. He was selected for the West Indies team in the last series that the West Indies played against Sri Lanka, but because he contracted the COVID-19 virus, wasn't able to offer his uh, services in that series. The West Indies won that series 2-1. Yep. An out-and-out game-breaker. That's what he is. He's tight so far in this over. Just uh, two runs and three balls. And his length is just impeccable at the moment. Can't do too much with that. They need boundary South Africa. That's all they need to do. No boundaries in five overs at the moment. I know there's been a couple of queries from South Africa actually about uh, rain interruption and how long before they start losing overs if they're off for some time. It is 60 minutes and it's only been 15 minutes up until now. So we've got plenty of time up our sleeve. As I say, that's a bit of sunshine as well. Drop that in short. Didn't get all of it, but got enough. That's an important boundary. Yes, and he responds, Rassi van der Dusen. Just advancing, prompting Russell to go short. That's such a key part of... Uh, batting in T20 cricket, enforcing yourself on the opposition bowler, maybe with a little shuffle or movement deep into the crease. Just tailing back a fraction, actually, and a dot ball to finish. 122 for four. 
George Linder is the man that's uh, listed to come in next. Now he can hit a long ball as well. He's been known to do a very good job at provincial level, hitting uh, some big boundaries at the end. He might enjoy this surface too. He's every chance of opening the bowling. The batting power play was the first six over. South Africa just lost the one wicket. They were down a little bit in their boundary percentage and what they've been going at of late. But you can see it tailed away quite a bit and they lost wickets at the wrong minutes. Those satellite dishes every now and then just taking them back. So they've got to build some tall buildings in these next four overs. Some one or two skyscrapers actually. That's uh, what they need. Two overs to go, 17 and 19 in particular will be so important. My last stint I was waxing lyrical about uh, South Africa and their great batting in the middle period. In fact, their average run rate higher than what they score in the power playovers. Do you think a lot of that had to do with uh, David Miller and the position he bats? You thought he probably would have come ahead of uh, Henrik Klaassen? Yeah, I thought that that probably should have been the move, actually. I think David Miller's a, a guy who's just played so much T20 cricket around the world. He's was in very good form for South Africa in Pakistan. Had a, a blinder of a knock, 85, if I'm not mistaken. It was a terrific knock in uh, one of the matches there. He's a, ex look at that experience, extraordinary experience. Left and right-hand combination. So also the slower tracks, he wouldn't, that wouldn't have concerned him because he's played so much in India. Indeed, and he scored 111 runs. He alluded to his uh, great form against Pakistan. Coming in in the 15th over, a little time for him to get set. So South Africa might have missed a trick in terms of their batting order. They've got to identify, I think, going forward to the World Cup. They've got to identify who is their game breaker with the bat. It's Miller. I spoke to Temba Bafuma a couple of days ago. He also said that there are discussions going on with Faf Duplessis. Yeah, yeah. He's playing franchise cricket at the moment, but uh, yeah. he has been involved in some of those discussions and who knows that uh, there are discussions and it sounded like he'd be pretty keen to get him involved. It sounded like it's going to be positive. I'm sure Faf would love to play. to scamper back for the second if they don't collide they don't throws wild so safely back Bravo. Dwayne Bravo he has scaled Mount Everest nah, nah. Well, it has come to T20 cricket 518 T20 wickets uh, with this man on screen this one shy of what Courtney Walsh achieved in test match cricket Courtney Walsh 519 test wickets Bravo in T20s 5.18 at the moment. And this is a major part of his success. His top deliveries for the 3%, but it's his slower balls. 57%. He uses them at the right times. He knows exactly when to set a batsman up. So Miller would have faced him before. On strike now with his slower balls. Hammering it hard on the ground. Extra cover is there. The thing about uh, those slow balls also, Darren, is the fact that everyone knows he bowls him. Bowls them, I should say. Everyone studied him bowling them. All the guys that play against him, they still can't stop him. He's still brilliant doing it. It's uh, amazing, that swing. It really is. Comes over the top, if you like, like a top spinner in tennis, like a, a curveball in baseball. Oh, he's hammered that. That's nicely struck. That was a lovely sound off the bat. And what a great way for him to sign off that over. Six to finish, 17 gone, 133 for four.
Bravo, slow delivery in the last over. Not uh, deceiving Rassi van der Dusen. He's been there for a while, so he picked it nicely. Got in position. Sweetly timed over the boundary. So we're now at the important stage of uh, T20 game. Got three overs remaining. His numbers so far have been really good. McCoy, I, I guess the guys call him real. What are we right, Darren? Maybe the real. Feels he missed out there, Miller. He fancied that being a bit of a, uh, a half volley that he could have slapped away for a boundary to start the over. He has uh, 24 years of age. He's quite comfortable with all his variations over the wicket, around the wicket. There's no dramas about what he does. He, in T20 cricket, you've got to have a, a full bag of tricks. You make sure you don't have too many different balls you do try. Some players overcomplicate things and, and think too much of that. Well, that's, was it above waist height? Funner Dawson is having a look at the square leg umpire, actually, to see if it was. Also just having a chat to the standing umpire now. Let's try them both, didn't win. So let's have a look at uh, one of the tricks that he's got. This is a stock ball on the left and the slower ball on the right. The release variations. This is what the batsman will be looking at. What he would see and it's just extraordinary. It's just very, very similar. Well, oh, that's beautifully bold. That was uh, the slower delivery then. And it's the palm of the hand that you've got to focus on as a batsman. If you see the palm, it's the faster delivery. If you don't see the palm, it comes from the back of the hand itself. Right of screen. Very skillful from Obed McCoy. And that last delivery you bowled was exactly that, out of the back of the hand. A lovely freeze to, to see that variation. And, and as a batsman to see that and pick that up and adjust at the last minute, that's quite a challenge. And it takes a long, long time for bowlers to get that right. Try doing it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nicely bowled too. This is really good stuff from McCoy. Three singles only, correction. Four singles only in this over, and they want boundaries, South Africa. Sure, he'll be too happy at the moment. The skipper in the middle. Perfect. Try setting yourself to hit this out of the park. Goes for the Yorker, kneels it, piece on the ball, with the angle as well, getting very close. So there are no arms involved in that stroke. 141 k's per hour. So he's bowling with some pretty good uh, pace as well. So five singles from this over. They are desperate for boundary South Africa off this last ball. Short ball, no pace to it. There is a bit of protection down there. It is going to be two runs in the end. And at this stage of an innings, that over is the real McCoy. 18 gone, 140 for four.
nice to see the spectators having fun. Great to see spectators back at the game, that's for sure. So two overs left now. I guess at the start of the innings, you would think somewhere around the 150 mark on this sort of surface where it's uh, pretty barren, 140, 150 would have been around about an average target. Maybe a little bit north of that, 160. But then with the batting that uh, the West Indies do have, the likes of Gale, Russell, Pollard, surely you've got to add another 20, 25. That suddenly bumps it up considerably. Over number 19. This is such an important over always in T20 cricket. So it's even more difficult in this uh, phase for South Africa is the experience of Adwin Bravo, who's done it countless times, uh, restricting opposition teams, getting wickets. Just never know where his mind is. Pollard, by the way, is at long off. Just where that ball was going. And he's got him. Straight to him, it was flat. I don't think that went above six feet off the ground, actually. That was so well hit, but straight to Pollard. Got himself in the right spot. Got the buckets behind it, and that's a big wicket. He creamed it. It was just uh, the placement that he didn't have. It was there for the taking. He went straight. Could have gone a little bit wider, but all credit to, to Karen Pollard, who owns that piece of real estate when you come to the back end of the innings. Again, good cricket accounting for another South African wicket. Miller goes for nine, 140 for five. Two balls into the 19th, 140 for five. George Linder now at the crease. Got an opportunity to uh, make a little bit of a difference here with a couple of thumping shots down the ground. Strong lad, likes to go straight. Slice that in the air, covers. And well caught. Two and two. Sinclair the catcher and Bravo. Well, there's surprises in the game yet again. Well, this time he goes wide. He takes pace off the ball. It was a slower delivery. And he could understand uh, what Linda was trying to do. And there's no time for him to settle. South Africa behind in terms of striking boundaries. Just didn't middle it. Peeled off the outside edge of the bat and... Smart catch in the end by Kevin Sinclair. Two from two. Bravo on the hat trick. George Linda goes uh, without scoring. 40 for six now. Hundred and forty for six now, halfway through the nineteenth over. And Khisa Rabat has arrived in the middle, so is a little bit of a drizzle. The players will try and get through this. And he is on a hat trick. Wayne Bravo. Not to be so close from Dwayne Bravo. But he sits on a famous number, 519. That's the number of wickets he's taken in T20 cricket. And he 
He's gone 520 with this one. Gee, what an unbelievable performer he's been. It's two and two. It's a really good catch, actually, over the shoulder. Great to see these guys playing T20 international cricket for the West Indies. Squeezed away, found a gap, might have picked up a boundary, has picked up a boundary. South Africa needed that desperately. Don't rule a flurry out. Kagiso Robada is very capable with the bat. We saw that in the test series. Squeezes the boundary out of that uh, excellent delivery from Bravo. And that uh, just kickstart his innings and shift. The pendulum in favor for uh, South Africa now. It's the other thing about all this experience from uh, Bravo. He knows exactly what he wants from the fielding point of view. He's asked for a bit of reinforcement behind. Well, actually, it's in a, a gully position, a deep gully. Last four, the over. Last ball, the spell. Quick single to finish the over. Direct hit would have been fine for South Africa. Slight hesitation, but they'll come back for the second. That is the end of a outstanding spell from Bravo again. We've said that a few times over the years. Two for 30 for him. 19 gone, 147 for six. Well, what can South Africa do off this last over? They need to get uh, certainly a couple of boundaries. I'll try and set the target of the 160 mark. Can they get 13 off the last? McCoy to finish. None for 18 off three overs from McCoy so far. Nicely worked on the onside for six. That's a great start to the last over. 50 up for Rassi van der Dusen. Continues his fine form in this format of the game. Enhancing his reputation every time he plays. Knew exactly what he wanted to do. It was in the slot. But he just opened that front leg enough to hit it wide of long on into the gap. A couple of sixes and three fours in this 50 off 34 balls. Really good work from Rassi van der Dussen. Just the one brings uh, Rabada back on strike now. Why well, he's such a good player in all formats. He doesn't narrow his options. He goes to leg, he goes through the upside, Rassi van der Dusen. And that was an earlier situation where the awareness was there for both uh, batsmen, sneaking a couple. Slow ball, undone was Rabada by that. Threw it far too early. Again, awareness from these two. Would have communicated in some way before this delivery. The ball goes through to the wicketkeeper. Let's turn the strike over. Van der Dusen was off in a flash. And Rabada responded. So I think we'll have to look back at this innings and uh, obviously just look to improve areas, which is what they're looking to do for the World Cup coming up. They went through a period in this innings, in the middle, seven overs, lost a couple of wickets and only scored 19 runs. That was just after uh, the 11th over. So that was the stretch where it, uh, they let themselves down a bit. Three balls left in the innings. The right man is on strike for South Africa. McCoy is continuing his fine work. Oh, that's a pretty good crack on the bouncer. Oh, no, it's gone for four. Unforced error. Fletcher down there. Not very spicy from Andre Fletcher. 
And there is a crowd. They might uh, share a word or two. Not supportive at all at this stage of the innings. These are crucial runs for South Africa. Crucial runs conceded by the West Indies. They can't afford to do that. Things get really tight at the end of uh, a T20 international. Six off the first ball, the over. Moving around the crease, but good work from McCoy. Often talk about uh, the Yorker and how effective it is uh, in all formats of the game, more so in this format and at this stage of the innings. It is a delivery you can bank on if you're trying to contain an opposition batsman. You can be defensive, as we saw in that last delivery, going wide and full. Or you can go full and straight, more attacking option. There is protection. So it is Pollard, there's good arm as well. Direct hit from that distance is really good work from the captain. Wanting Puran to take it in front of the stump section so there's no deflection. But that's 20 overs. 160 they end up with. 160 for six. They just want to do a double check to uh, just make sure that uh, the direct hit didn't uh, cause the fall of a wicket. It wouldn't make any difference to the score in the end if it did. 160 for six, I guess, is certainly 10, 15, maybe 20, less than what they would have liked. Oh! That's this young king. Exciting game on our hands here. It's interesting to see how Fletcher and, Lu and Evan Lewis go about it. And no surprise really that they've opted for a spin against Andrew Fletcher who strikes at just over 100, 104 against spin as compared to 128 against the fast bowler. So they've done their homework, the South Africans. Yes, right. and finds the feel of what is surprising for me, Stacey, is that Evan Lewis didn't take the strike, the left-handed batsman against the left hand orthodox bowler just think that he would have much better chance of getting a boundary or two in the opening over it's just their game plan i guess tight single here Off the mark, the West Indies, sometimes as an opening batsman, you prefer to take the first strike. Sometimes you prefer not to. But such a tremendous strike of the ball, Evan Lewis. Really good numbers in T20 cricket. I mentioned those two centuries against India. One in Fort Lauderdale and the other at Sabina Park. Really likes to get off to a flyer. Dispatched. Too short, too straight. A flat six. He's on the way. First delivery. Just on earlier, you were mentoring Samuel. Why didn't he take the strike? Full of confidence, Evan Lewis. Going down the leg side here, pull the wind nicely. Too short from George Linda, too straight as well. We'll have to make the adjustment. Bowling to the left handed Lewis is going to be challenging. These batsmen are boundary hitters. Quick single gets there. Good start for the West Indies. Eight runs in the first over.
really an intimidating batting lineup when you look at the likes of Chris Gale, Puran, Pollard, Russell, Jason Holderfield and Alan Dwayne Bravo at nine. This team really boasts of explosive power hitters, really giants of the game in T20 cricket. He gives a Rabada from the river end. A very quick delivery, short and sharp and through him. And before he was able to get the bat around, Evan Lewis. No warm-up deliveries from Kagiso Rabada. A nice short pitch delivery here from Rabada. Just picking up from where he left off in the test against West Indies. It's going to be a test for Evan Lewis in the pace of Rabada. Quite often teams have opted to use that short delivery to Evan Lewis who sits back on his crease and really plays for those. You won't be too surprised if Rabada tries to bowl one full just to catch him on the crease. A very skillful, experienced bowler for South Africa. It's an excellent test match series, so full of confidence. Makes the connection. And this time, Evan Lewis got the length and it got the treatment. Another boundary for Lewis. And he is a fearless batter. Just gets into the line of this one and pulled away for four runs. Just mentioned about him sitting back at his crease and playing for those short deliveries. Evan Lewis really picks up length quite quickly. Tremendous strike off the ball. Change in field. And a sweep on the offside. And deep backwards on the one side. Let's see what length. Kegiso Rabada goes for now. Edge the way. Gets it fine. Gets the boundary. Another boundary. Consecutive boundaries for Evan Lewis. The West Indies are off. Tickling this one down the leg side and with third man and fine leg up in the circle. Easy gap, four runs. Really asking a lot of Kagiso Rabada with this field, deep backward square, deep point as the two fielders out. Has to be a spot on. Takes him on and gets the distance, Evan Lewis. Another boundary. Two sixes, two fours for the pugnacious opening batsman. Just living up to his standards, Evan Lewis. With that strike rate of 169 against the short balls. Just ready to take on anything Rabada pitches up. Or pitch is short. Expensive first over so far. One delivery left for Rabada. Gets the strike. 15 runs from this over. The West Indies, 23 without loss. Changing bowling from the Dabo Road end. 
Anrik Nokia replaces George Linder. West Indies off to a flyer. Haven't seen sun, much sunshine for the duration of the day, but we've seen some fireworks from Evan Lewis in particular. Raced along to 22 from just the eight deliveries, two fours, two sixes. A strike rate of 275. At the risk of stating the obvious, the, the South Africans, they need a wicket. Deep backward square point on the boundary, or wide third man as the two fielders out for Nokia. A really good start for West Indies and Evan Lewis. 169, his strike rate of the short delivery over compensating Rabada. Tickle for that shot. Really magnificent blue. Fast and short from Rabada. Took it on, even with the field in the deep. Such a, the confidence of the man. Andrew Fletcher will need to play a supporting role. Well, he's gone after it as well. You forget about supporting. I want to get in on the act, says the Spice Man. Applause from the spectators who are at the stadium. The homeboy on fire. Just slow a ball from Anrik Nokia. Pulled away nicely by Fletcher. To the maximum six runs. Good repost from Nokia. Good pace. No room. You can just sense that these West Indian batsmen are hunting for boundaries. And with the familiarity of the venue, Andrew Fletcher, of course, heels from Grenada, will be confident in his ability. Almost 150 keys from Nokia. So ramping up the pace. Good fast bowlers on show here on display. Rabada, Nokia, and Gidi to come a little bit later on. So it's a good test, a good challenge for the West Indian batsmen. And their game plan is going to be a test for the South African bowlers as well. But the way the West Indians play, especially in the power play, looking for boundaries, looking to capitalize in the first six. It's a real test for the South Africa bowlers because they would have come from a test where none of these West Indian batters have been there. So now it's, it's a different format. It's different batters, lines. There's a lot less time for that judgment of error. So it's going to be interesting how they go about it. Now, traditionally, when you win a two-match test series 2-0, you have that momentum, you have that psychological advantage, but with just one player you know, from that battered and bruised team in the team, in Jason Holder here, you don't necessarily have that psychological advantage. This is a team full of T20 superstars, T20 specialists. Stifle appeal from Nokia, 150 kph, three gone, and a 32 without loss.
And for all of that fireworks that we've seen so far, after three overs, scores exactly the same from the South Africans. They had a similarly explosive start. Reza Hendricks and Quinton de Kock. And changing bowling from the river end. Lungi Ngidi replaces Peggy Surabada. Another one of those experienced bowlers in T20 cricket. Played in the IPL for the Chennai Super Kings. Welcome, this says Evan Lewis. Just plants that front foot down the wicket and clubbers it past the bowler. Another boundary. Rushes on to 27. Pitched up delivery and driven nicely. A bit in the air, but it just beats Temba Bubama, the captain, and that long off position. Helps it out along the way. Another wayward delivery from Ngidi. And just needed to get some bat on it. And that he did. Consecutive boundaries to start for Evan Lewis in this over. Four fours and two sixes to his name. Yeah, this delivery just too short and lined poorly. Evan Lewis is enjoying it. Good comeback delivery from Ngidi. Comfortable blow for Evan Lewis. Really uncomfortable area to be hit with that cricket ball. And he's feeling the pain. Good quick delivery, tight line. Might have been a little bit of an inside edge into the groin region. And although he's in pain, the South African bowlers are the ones who are facing the agony at the moment. 3.3 overs, 40 without loss. Very painful. No matter what you do in this situation, nothing helps. I can tell you that having been in that position, just need some time to catch yourself, to catch your breath for that pain to dissipate. But you can see the agony and the grimace on his face. Evan Lewis versus Seam in this innings, very strong off of that short delivery. And living up to that reputation of having a high strike rate, 159 off the short deliveries. Like I mentioned, he often sits back on the crease, waiting for those deliveries. And on a good pitch, such as this one, if you bowl full, he can make the adjustment. Has such quick feet, good hand-eye coordination. At the moment, he's in some panic. It's nice to see a smile on his face, even in the midst of this agony. A really excellent start, though, by the West Indies. And only 3.3 overs. Evan Lewis, first delivery, paced, smashed it for six. A couple short balls from Rabada. And neatly had that one away, and that one was well connected over the boundary. A welcomed Ngidi down the ground, and another short delivery helped the way. Right, just a reminder, you know, this over, two fours and that dot delivery. And let's see how Evan Lewis responds. Well, he went for it. Wanted to exact some bit of revenge, missed it completely. It's interesting, Samuel, four bowlers have been used in four overs so far by South Africa. 
swing and a miss. That other than the fact that you're not trying to let batters, West Indies batsmen, get in, it also shows that you are going for runs as well. So bowlers are not comfortable, or the captain isn't comfortable with what he's seeing from his bowlers. Another short one, and another six. Such a powerful strike off the ball, takes on that short ball, even with the fielder in the deep, and they are enjoying it. Expensive first over from Ngidi. And just playing to his strengths, Evan Lewis. Stand and deliver. Such a dangerous batsman, Evan Lewis. Really have to get him out, otherwise he can do tremendous damage in the power play and final delivery. And another one goes again. Two feelers in the deep this time. Doesn't matter. Sails over their heads. Ends the over with another six consecutive sixes to end. Expensive 20 runs coming from it. Brings up the 50 in only the fourth over. 52 without loss to West Indies. Magnificent start for Evan Lewis and the West Indies. Another short delivery. And this time hits it in front of square. Gets it deep enough and long enough. Four fours and four sixes for Evan Lewis. Rabada. Another boundary this time. Is it? Yes, it is. Just enough on it from Andre Fletcher. Couldn't hold on to it. It was always going to be a difficult one. Just gets enough on it to go above and over the boundary. Andre Fletcher. Two sixes for him. Just picking out the only player out there. Exquisite from Fletcher doesn't move after he plays the shot just stands there because he knows it's racing across the boundary the homeboy the spice man in full flow it's cut nicely in that gap just holds that pose in the end Andrew Fletcher sixes ever hit by the West Indies at this stage of the innings six sixes all told two for Fletcher four for Evan Lewis and look at the difference in starts West Indies way ahead not only in runs but haven't lost that wicket and you can see how relaxed that dressing room is and such a powerful T20 team Not where he intended it. Gets the single nonetheless. Such a fickle game. Cricket, Rabada. So successful in the test matches. In T20, well, no one plays on reputation or form. They're just going after it. 1.4 overs, none for 26. Very expensive from Rabada. And a very good partnership building here for West Indies. 63 from 28 balls. West Indies team will be looking at that best combination as they head towards that World Cup. Andrew Fletcher given an opportunity and so far he has grabbed it. Transfer run out, direct it needed, direct it. Just might have gotten back in there. Empire Augusta just wants to make sure, but 
based on the reaction of the fielders, it doesn't seem the as though in. Can I have he would be too bothered. Copy that, Simon. Still waiting for the angle, guys. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Bats grounded behind the crease. Wicket is now broken. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. My decision for the big screen is not out. Repeat, not out. Comfortably back in, Andre Fletcher. Not out. Will be the call but a brilliant start by the West Indies mentioning about looking at their best combination Lindell Simmons missed out today just confirmation of that not out missed out today and Andrew Fletcher given that opportunity and he'd want to make the best use of this along with Lewis smashed straight to the fielder a rare dot delivery from South Africa and five overs gone 63 without loss Magnificent start by the West Indies, chasing this 161-run target. The openers have been absolutely brilliant. There's been some power, there's been some punishment of the poor bowlers. And Giri really struggled in this over, going for 20 in that over. It can at times be expensive, but he also gets wickets. This time around, it was all about Evan Lewis. Some superb batting from the specialist opener. Absolutely brilliant, putting South Africa under serious pressure. So much so that Tabrash Shamsi has come to ball in the power play. Which doesn't happen too often for Tabrash Shamsi. But they need him to take a wicket. Very, very late. Well, a couple of things here. Evan Lewis, one of two players in this West Indies team to have a strike rate in excess of 150 in T20 internationals. Playing true to form. Mr. Hendricks uh, does often find himself in different positions within the field, sometimes at point. He also finds himself very often on the boundary. And they put him at backward square leg. Have a look at that. Simply sensational from him. He just couldn't get, obviously, back in the field of play. Momentum took him over the boundary rope. Superb effort, though. Power again and finding the gap. This is superb from the West Indies. What a start. Well, the power play we've seen from Evan Lewis is becoming contagious. Andre Fletcher gets into stride, he's uh, produced a couple of boundaries recently. This one, stylish. It's in the air, but it's well over the top. And this field is tearing after it, but it's going to skip away to another boundary. No answers at the moment by South Africa. But Fletcher and Lewis are on a fantastic run. The current run rate is getting close to 13 and over. And pressure on Pemba Vavuma, captain in South Africa in T20 internationals for the first time. Under the pump with the power play we've seen from these two at the crease. A 
And it's pretty much a litmus test, you would say, Natalie, for Bavuma in this role as captain. Yeah, Tembo Bavuma is uh, he's under pressure for lots of reasons. And with the T20 World Cup around the corner, he wants to make sure he gets the team ready for that. He hasn't had a lot of time out in the middle through injuries as well. On the side, so we'll have to ball that again. It's a lot due to pressure. Shams is not uh, often used in the power play. Last time he was used in the situation was back in September 2019. South Africa are looking to buy a wicket here. It's been a fantastic power play. Couldn't have been better for the West Indies. 73 without loss. Power play is done for the West Indies in their chase of 161. South Africa at the same stage were 53 for one. So you can see how far ahead the West Indies are already. And South Africa hasn't picked up a wicket yet, so they've got to find a way to get the worm co to come back to that green worm. Because right now the purple one's running away with it. start but uh, from West Indies point of view Evan Lewis has been absolutely superb couldn't have asked for more from him in this power play he has uh, hit some big sixes and he's put uh, all the bowlers under pressure right from the word go that was in the first over and then he went after Fahiso Rabada who was bowling at a good pace as well and has been in good form actually didn't really matter who bowled to him he went after them all in particular in Gidi took a real liking to him and there was also a few down the leg side which was put away by Fletcher Fletcher has been moved up and down the order now finds himself opening the batting and he seems to be well settled there at the moment more power in the shot but uh, now that we're out of that power play there can be protection Lovely, funny you mention uh those six sixes and if you're playing against the West Indies in T20 internationals you must factor in the percentage of uh, runs scored with boundaries amongst teams since 2018 they ranked the highest West Indies 62 percent of runs scored were scored from boundaries You've got to find a way as a bowling unit to restrict that boundary scoring ability Imagine South Africa will be hoping now that the power play is done with the opportunity to spread the field out a little bit. They can maybe change things, but he is to come. It's been moved to three. We're not quite yet found his groove, I suppose you could say. It uh, hasn't really hit the stage of light, but he, on his day, is so destructive, even now. And South Africa will know that very, very well. I've uh, been on the back of a few Chris Gale specials. That's what bold. Very nicely done. You mentioned Chris Gale, who is playing a different role for most teams in T20 cricket. And he had a sneak through to one. Another one. Quite sloppy there from South Africa. And Chris Gale not only will be required to score runs with the bat at number three. Look at this again. Just ricocheting off the stumps, which I love that second run. It's his experience and value as well that will uh, feature significantly in that West Indies dressing room. The wealth of knowledge he has playing T20 cricket. His aura as the greatest T20 batsman 
in T20 cricket. And that adds a lot to this West Indian side. Down the ground. What a magnificent shot. Straight for the commentary box. And a 50 for Evan Lewis. What a special innings from the specialist opener who has one of the best strike rates in the world. His seventh T20 international half century. And in typical Evan Lewis style, has come up off just 22 deliveries. Five sixes, four fours. He's played like a man possessed. It's been a savage display of uh, batting by the left-handed Trimbalinian. Well, he's got a career strike rate of close to 160. Strike rate today, 236. Just about won the game for the West Indies in these first few overs already. 84 without loss. Well, having a look at the comparison, I suppose you can almost say there's no comparison. West Indies are so far ahead. Well, they haven't lost a wicket yet either. That's a crucial thing for South Africa. Will it be this man, the number one T20 international bowler in the ICC men's rankings? Oh. We followed him. He followed him. He's really got to get a move on, though. He's really got to get a move on. And Giri throwing down the stumps from fine leg. Copy that. At the non-striker's end. TV umpire to director. We have a run out at the bowler's end. I have your best side on angle. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Ricket's broken and the bat is short of its crown. I'm satisfied with that. Can we? But the big screen is not working. Okay, on the big screen, my decision is out. Repeat, out for the big screen. Wonderful awareness from South Africa, and in particular, Ngidi in the field. And just what was required. South Africa desperately needed to break that partnership. But what a fantastic innings, and what a fantastic partnership we've seen from these two up front. will be Fletcher to walk off for the West Indies. There's just a, a little bit of a mix-up in the middle, and it means the first wicket goes with 86 runs on the board, and Fletcher goes for 30. Chris Gale walks uh, to the crease at number three. Well, he's had a wonderful platform laid for him. He can come in and he can just play his normal game. And he has the numbers uh, going behind him. 22 T, 20 centuries. Would have scored 111 at this venue in the Caribbean Premier League back in 2014 when he played for the Jamaica Tallowers. And when you look at matchups with South Africa and the West Indies, He's a leading run scorer in T20 internationals across both teams. 307 runs at an average of 43. Strike rate of 195. One century and two fifties. 
That's the reputation of the man. Can he live up to it? So the non strikers in for now. And Shams is going to continue. Big man on strike. Just having a look at how this wicket oh. fell. It was down the leg side. He, Shamsi had followed him, and Giri showed wonderful oh. awareness. He saw that the batter wasn't in at the non striker's end. This is superb work from the big man. And the direct throw was required. Now, left arm wrist spin to Chris Gale early in his innings. He's been dismissed five times by left arm wrist spinners in T20 cricket. There's a slip in place. Interested to see how Chris Kale plays this. South Africa know that at times he has been susceptible to spin. It's nicely bold. Now to raise Shams, he will be expected to deliver with the ball, not only because of his uh, skill and class, but he's had experience playing in the Caribbean, playing for the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. In the Caribbean Premier League, he did so in 2015, 2016, 17 and 18. So familiar with the conditions here in the Caribbean. Natalie, you know you'll be familiar with the players of the likes of Chris Gale and others on this West Indies team. One of the ways that Tabray Shamsi sort of broke into international cricket was playing in the CPL. Back in 2015, I think it was, he was brought into the CPL after Marlon Samuels actually saw him in a warm-up game in South Africa. Uh, he, said, he said that, you know what, this is somebody we want. Thank you to Nevis. He did well. Had some of his fancy celebrations as well. He's got a few of them. Haven't seen his name in the, the draft for this year's CPL. Who knows? He might feature in this year's Caribbean Premier League. Mm, leaving it alone. The umpire just had a little think of that. And he says he's happy. 88 for one. What a, a fantastic start has been for the West Indies. They've laid a wonderful platform. And now with the target of 161, you would still imagine all the cards are with the West Indies. They've lost just the one wicket so far through a run out. Most of the bowlers have gone for runs. Now it'll be Einrich Nokia to bowl his second over into his second spell. Two left-handers at the crease now as well for the West Indies. My virtue of the tempo to the innings, uh, what the West Indies uh, as a team has done. And they've uh, reduced the required rate to six. Will uh, allow a little more latitude for Chris Gale to get himself in. Have more of a look before he gets into stride as a batsman. Better from South Africa. The West Indies really found a good groove as well. Sort of towards after the 10 over mark. And then they were able to find a way to, to get the right pace of the wickets, right pace to bowl, right areas. South Africa really struggled to find boundaries 
in the second half of the innings. I'd be interested to see how this all plays out now. You mentioned pace. Recent times, teams, they've used, used extra pace and bowling to Chris Gale. And they'll need that because of the dominant maroon womb. Way ahead of the required rate. Just dipping a bit with the loss of that first wicket. Will he go full and fast? Goes short. And just be setting up that fast Yorker. Seen quite a few bowlers go round the wicket and try to get that uh, attacking Yorker very early when bowling to Chris Scale. Yeah, well, he's just that shorter, quicker ball in, push him back possibly, or keep him back at least, and then maybe push the fuller one in. Keeping it back over the length for now, keeping the pace up as well. I know earlier we were talking about the number of sixes by the West Indies at a certain stage and surprised that just a few overs ago they'd reached a record for the West Indies because you think of Chris Gale opening the batting and you think they'd be hitting big sixes right early on well, the first 10 balls that he faces he strikes at 110 his next 10 161 so he definitely is a little bit of a slower starter and then gets a move on did go for the Yorker but it was uh, down the leg side Chris Gale I'm sure with the glut of runs he scored in T20 cricket would not have been surprising to him he's equal to the task just clipped it away just taking his time Evan Lewis it's just been a, a little quiet period here for the West Indies Brilliant. Excellent and wonderful of his own bowling as well. Ends the over, 90 for one. Evan Lewis has uh, been superb in this innings. He is a very destructive hitter. He's got an excellent strike rate. And when he went past 11, he went past 1,000 T20 international runs as well in this innings. And there was nobody that he spared either. He went after Ngidi in particular in this over with some big sixes. Certainly favored that leg side, but South Africa allowed him to hit them. That's probably the shot of the day. Straight down the ground, that took him to his 50. It's been an entertaining innings by Evan Lewis. And just what was required. So in this innings, going past 1,000 T20 international runs. Got a couple of hundreds already to his name. And we headed for another one. Is there enough here for him? Tabrez Shamsi just getting into groove, working away outside the line of the off stump, just uh, turning it away from Chris Gale. That's the wrong on, which he will use as his wicket taking delivery, possibly to the left handed Gale. It's nicely bold, very nicely done, definitely got some purchase. Purchase off the surface. Good signs for South Africa. Good by Shamsi. South Africa's definitely had a better period of play here, but questions may be around where they go from here in terms of the bowlers for the next 10 overs. Because South Africa don't have a lot of options in terms of using anybody else to bowl. That's their five bowlers. Tabrash Shamsi is into his third already. Linda's only bowled one. So how does Temba Babuma rotate his bowlers in these last ten overs? Well, for one, he will not want to bowl his left arm spinner to the two left-handers uh, out in the middle. That will make it uh, easy for them to hit with the turn. 
So he's limited in terms of spin option. That was short. And maybe got away with it a little bit there. And the question is then, when does George Linder bolt? Because he's only he's got another three to come. Uh, this is a, a little interesting period of play. South Africa need a wicket because of the scorecard, but also from a point of view of these last 10 overs and how they use those bowlers. From South Africa's point of view, we often talk about all-rounders from South Africa's point of view, but right now in this uh, side, there isn't a lot of that. George Linder is a bowling all-rounder, but there's only five bowling options. Tampa Bob Wilmer can turn his arm over. He's done it before. Don't know if we'll see it again today. <laughs> Halfway stage, and uh, the West Indies now 93 for one. Halfway mark, 93 for one it is. They've got a, uh, had a good little break all along the West Indies due to that great start. Now, this will uh, be a little bit interesting. He's someone who would have been told before that he might be used. It's a little bit of off spin is what he does bowl. But I must admit, it's a very rare occasion that Reza Hendricks has been employed as a, as a bowler. Never bowled in T20s before. See how he goes. Welcome to the crease. I think that's what Chris Gow said. Welcome to the crease, Reza. reason why he's never bowled in T20s clearly Mike but what a welcome the bowling in international T20 cricket from Chris Gale I mean if you think about it that delivery that was bowled then would have been a perfect practice delivery for Chris Gale to try and hit sixes off spinners in the center wicket practice I was just floated up perfectly for him I mean that's not Reza Hendricks that's fault it. they did not have another option if Markram was playing they would have had another option he does bowl Ospin from time to time. He has bowled Ospin from time to time. So he would have been the extra bowler. Now that's short. And it's also been smacked for six more. Where's the skipper hiding now? Goodness me. Not easy for Bavuma. Just too short. Chris Gale just gets under this one and nicely pulls it away. Power. Chris Gale might just be reminded that Pollard, Karen Pollard, hit six in an earlier, in an over earlier this year, so he may just be thinking about that. Settle down, Stacey, settle down. Don't get too carried away there. At edge. He was going for it. <laughs> there he was. He definitely was. There's no doubt about it. Just coming off probably the bottom of the bat, just an edge. So South Africa at the same stage were 89 for two. So it's a real break here for the West Indies. Don't forget, Lewis is the man that uh, has been screaming at the other end. He's played extraordinarily well. Brought up his 50 off 22 deliveries only. 
five outside the playing arena. He might be fancying another one, is he? Coming towards us. Yep, that's six more. Just doing what he has done so far. Get back into his crease and hit power, strength down the ground. Six runs. So it's under 50 now. 49 is what they need. They have got a real break on proceedings. There we go. One ball left in the uh, 11th over. 112 versus 91. So 19 runs from this over, too, from Reza. It's another one that he's attempted to go. He might pick up a wicket. No, it's going to fall safely. Those green boots of Tabray Shamsi chasing after it. End result is that that is 21 runs from the over. 11 gone, 114 for one. Well, I think the worms have had a bit of a scrap. The maroon worm has uh, decided to disappear from the green one. Had a bit of an argument, and they, he's gone north. So that's not Reza Hendrick's fault. He's just not a bowler. It's as simple as that. He's a very good batsman. I hope there's no reflection on his uh, game because of that. Shamsi. Direct hit. I think he's okay there. Lewis is very quick, even though he did get a, a nasty blow earlier. They are going to send it upstairs, I think. They are going to send it upstairs. Let's have a look and see how close it is. TV umpire to director. We have a run out. Can I have your best side on anchor, please? Keep rolling. Bats grounded. The wicket is not broken as yet. Okay, yes, can you roll forward now? The bales are in the air before, the, yeah, they, we can keep it, they storm the bales. Keep rolling it. Let me see if it was one bale off or two. Can I get another angle? A front on angle would be better for me. To see if it's both bales came off. Okay. Yes, keep rolling. Yes, both bales are off before the ball is collected. Bats grounded. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. My, de my decision is not out. We go on the Patrick. Pa no, we go to Patrick. The other umpire, Simon. Single not out, Patrick. You're on screen now. Not out. Well, direct hit would have been out, except uh, the keeper, the cock, removed the bales, as explained by the umpire. Nigel Dugit was the uh, TV umpire that we were listening to. So there's a uh, another horse that's bolted. So one down now, 115 on the board, just out of the 12th over. Slightly short, tried to hammer outside the playing arena and has been hammered outside. Six more. Just keeping with the flow of the game, Evan Lewis. Six runs. Shamsi is not going to get away. That's all he's saying in his mind. He's not going to get away. To brace Shamsi was very disappointed that he actually wasn't on the boundary line. Now, it's a little difficult, I suppose, when you're coming in a little bit. But I suppose when someone like Lewis and Gale are going, maybe you do hold back on a, a shorter boundary. Cries of catch at this time. It's on the bounce. Hendricks out there. So 
Shamsi wanted Rabada to be on the boundary. Had he be on the boundary, he would have caught that. It's not the biggest boundary. It's roughly just under 70. Wide called. Now he's back on the boundary. Power hitters, you've got to stay back, I guess. They try and hit uh, sixes all the time. That's what's uh, upset to Bray Shamsi, but that was short and wide, and there is a sweeper out there. You just settle in for one. Brings back Evan Lewis on the strike, who's on 71. 34 balls with 71. It's been a wonderful knock. We've always talked about the importance of a top order batter batting through the innings. And Evan Lewis, like he's put up his hand and decided that he's going to be that person today. Yes! To Bray Shams, he's screaming after this one. It's gone very high indeed. It's a very good catch. He's got very safe hands, David Miller. That's what they wanted. The end of Evan Lewis. To Bray Shamsi's job is to take wickets. It's as simple as that. He's got an important wicket now, but it's the end of a very, very fine knock. You're not getting enough on this one, Evan Lewis. And a comfortable catch in the air. Giving Shamsi his first wicket. Evan goes for 71 of 35 deliveries. 124 for two. Well, this guy is an extraordinary T20 cricketer. 50 matches, strike rate of 151. He's an out-and-out game-breaker. He's been chipping away with the ball of late as well for uh, various franchises. Non-strike is in at the moment. So 12 overs gone, 124 for two. Last wicket. Evan Lewis just not getting to the pitch of this one. And a comfortable catch in the end. Giving Shamsi his first wicket. Again, a good example of the right catcher in the right spot. David Miller's always loitering in that position at this time of an innings. Rabada now. Oh, crack! First ball. What a sound off the bat. That is magnificent stuff. My goodness. Short delivery. Hammered. 90 meters distance. From Andrew Russell. Just shows the power and strength of this man. Just came in as a matter of fact. Russell. One ball, six runs.
Well, there's a Prime Minister in the middle. He's watching on, enjoying the show, that's for sure. He'll be uh, thoroughly enjoying this work from the West Indies. He would have been disappointed, I'm sure, with the fact that they went down in the Test Series. But, uh, getting the first uh, of five T20s underway. And seeing plenty of action from the boys in Maroon. That shot first ball was unbelievable. I think Rabada was quite stunned by it. So the noise off the bat was echoing around this ground. Great to see the spectators also uh, getting pumped up and animated in the stand as well. Just taking a bit off Rabada. Slower balls. West Indies bowled quite a couple of those against South Africa batters and were successful. So why not? Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, against these guys, you've got to change your pace as, as well as you possibly can. Last one was 107. You've got to mix it up. You can't be uh, predictable. Short again. So quite a few teams have done that against Andre Russell over uh, the last uh, few years. Of course, he got a nasty blow on the helmet in the PSL. Big smack in the helmet. But that first ball from uh, Rabada didn't worry him one bit. Another slow delivery. Another duck. Just rolling his fingers over this one, Robado. going for the big Yorker to finish the over end of that over six runs from it from that first ball 130 for two Twenty-six runs better off for the West Indies after 13 overs. So they have to go 104 for three. So one more wicket off, and uh, certainly a lot of runs less. George Linder has been asked to try and stem this flow. Gale on strike. 31 from 42. That's what's needed. Slightly short. Has that been hammered for six? Yep. That's another one. Gee, it's been raining sixes today from the boys from the Caribbean. Just sitting back, Chris Gale, and pulling this one into that area where the wind is blowing across the ground as a left-hander. So a little help as well. So now uh, George Linder's going to try and come back. First ball goes for six. Rabada did in the last over. The next five balls are dot balls. A bit of a chat to uh, Quinton de Kock at the moment. There's uh, Chris Gale. Evan Lewis is having a bit of a chat to him as well, just before he was dismissed. Just changing his angle here. Wide called. Now strike rate against slow left arm bowling in T20 cricket is uh, just a lazy 219. It's the sort of pressure that George Linder's under right now. Oh, George Linder's got to make sure he's out the way of those. 
You wouldn't want that coming straight back at you. This one just in that arc. The scale going hard at it. I wouldn't want to put my hand there if I'm a bowler. He's had uh, some bad injuries uh, with his finger actually in Pakistan, George Linder, trying to take a return catch. It was pretty hot. Stitches. Bit of flight that time. Busca at one stage had some problems with uh, off spin bowling, but left armers haven't worried him at all. See, this is an emphatic performance from the West Indies. Slightly short, hasn't got all of it this time. There are uh, two men converging. But two balls left now. I wonder what he's thinking. What have we got? 19 from 38 balls. That's what they require. I wonder if he's thinking, okay, well, three big hits and. All right, maybe four big hits. Well, he is six of six. But George Linda is going to have a C on that as well. Gale Force. I think we've seen that from uh, the West Indies. That's what we've uh, experienced today. Slightly leg side. That's whipped away for another boundary. See, these boundaries are simply coming at will. Suddenly, that 16 runs from that over. 14 gone. 146 for two. This was uh, the last ball of the last over, and this has just been happening so regularly for the West Indies. Whenever they've needed a boundary, it's gone towards the boundary. 15 required from 36. It's just been comprehensive by the West Indies. South Africa have never really been in this game. They haven't really gained any momentum in this match. There's another match to go. This is only the first one. So Captain Tamba Vahuma is going to have a lot to discuss. And the coaches are going to have a lot to discuss, especially with their pacers. Because they are the ones that seem to have been you know, just leaking a bit of runs. A lot of questions in selection as well. Is this the right combination? South Africa knew that this was going to be sort of one of those play and feel, and play and learn kind of exhibitions almost because they haven't had an opportunity as a group to play too many series in a row. Oh, that sounded good. Good enough for a massive six onto the second tier. 50 on the board and in the 15th over. Pitched up delivery and it was smashed by Andrew Russell, who just stood there and going even further than the 90 meter six that he hit earlier. 95 meters. That is far. 
14 six of the innings. There's been a lot of those. And how they're enjoying it. And you definitely should enjoy it. He might have even caught it as well in the crowd. Oh, it's good to see this man back. Talk about match winners. He's one of them, that is for sure. He's won many of a match for the West Indies. The Honourable Dr. Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, looking on. And he should be very happy with what he's seeing. Great to see him showing support as well for this match. And wonderful to have cricket in this area. Oh, that was very short. Just couldn't quite get hold of it like he did previously. That was so short, he almost bounced it on his own toe. Gale quietly gone to 31 off 23. There's been so much talk about Evan Lewis, but he's after those couple of wickets, carried on with the momentum. As much as you can say, well, this is a foregone conclusion for the West Indies, it also sets a good tone for the rest of the series. West Indies not showing any weakness at the moment. It just shows the importance of partnerships. This one, tilthy one between Chris Gale and Andrew Russell. Practicing that shot, Andrew Russell. Let's see what he's about to do. Very wide of the crease on this occasion, and Gidi trying that leg side area where both teams have actually scored a lot of runs today. Just six to one. This is about as comprehensive as it gets. Just earlier on, we were seeing that the wind is blowing across the field. So everyone's targeting that leg side field. Yeah, that would be that direction, wouldn't it? Again. That is massive. And what a way to finish and go one more up in this five match series. Six. Number 15, West Indies win comprehensively. This has been superb by the home side. And they should be very happy and celebrate this win. What a way to make a statement in this five match series. Brilliant way to finish off, showing the power within this batting lineup. Not gonna be easy to change things for South Africa. And he's got a lot to think about, that is for sure.